Hello and welcome to NCAA.com for the Division II Baseball Tournament Selection Show. I'm your host, Jeremiah Johnson. It feels like we should take a moment to savor the fact that we've made it to this point and are ready to announce the field for the final Division II Championship of this very unusual year. 20 conferences will receive automatic qualification into this 2021 championship, with the remaining 22 teams selected on an at-large basis. Once again, there will be eight regions. Five of them, the Central, East, Midwest, South, and Southeast, will feature six schools. The Atlantic Regional will be a five-team affair, while four schools will compete in the South Central, three in the West. All regionals are double elimination. Those tournaments will be played May 27th. Through the 30th. Now, Tampa won the title in 2019 thanks to a 3 1 victory over Colorado Mesa. Who will prevail in 2021? So many of you have worked so hard to get this opportunity to once again travel the road to Cary, North Carolina. Let us start with the five team Atlantic Regional that is hosted by the University of Charleston, West Virginia. The number one seed is Seton Hill. 35 and 6. The Griffins fell to Bloomsburg in a best of three Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Championship Series, but Seton Hill is safe. The Griffins, led at the plate by Tommy Pellis and Derek Orndorff, get this, they each have 14 home runs and they each have 40 RBI. This is Seton Hill's 10th NCAA appearance. They have a 16 and 18 all time record in the tournament. Congratulations to number one seed, Seton Hill. Hill. The fourth seed in the Atlantic is 23 and 16 Bloomsburg. Thanks to five home runs in the title clincher, Bloomsburg is celebrating a second consecutive PSAC championship. The Wolves won the title thanks to two straight complete game performances on the mound. Jared Marshman went the distance in Saturday's championship. Michael Standen was named the MVP of the conference tournament. Fourth NCAA appearance for Bloomsburg. The first came back in 1995. Bloomsburg will face Five seed, Charleston, West Virginia, 31 and 10. Third straight NCAA appearance for the host Golden Eagles. And third overall, Logan Campbell has a 9 and 1 record on the mound for Charleston. The number two seed, also playing on day one, 28 and 13, Millersville. Like Seton Hill, they had to wait and hope for good news from the selection committee as they were eliminated in the PSAC championship tournament. Millersville, though, in as an at large, their 11th appearance where they have a 29 and 21 all time record. Bren Taylor leads Millersville in batting average and OPS, while Luke Trainer is the top run producer, tallying 50 runs batted in. Millersville will take on the three seed, the final school in this regional, 32 and 8, West Virginia State. They battled through the consolation bracket to clinch the league's AQ spot by sweeping Concord last weekend. Matthew Klein hit nearly 400 in the tournament. He was named the MVP. This is the 14th NCAA appearance for West Virginia State, just the second since 2010. So there you have the five-team Atlantic Regional. Six schools will compete in the Central Regional, hosted by the University of Central Missouri. Your number one seed just so happens to be Central Missouri. They headline, the headline on the main page of the school's baseball website said it's simply MIAA Tournament Champions. They did not commit an error in any of their three games this past weekend in Joplin, Missouri. In 2019, Coach Kyle Crooks led the Mules to a third-place NCAA finish, best in school history. Now they are back in the tournament, hoping to improve upon that in 2021. Dusty Straup has a 404 batting average to go along with his 18 home runs. And Mason Green is 13-0 on the mound. They were also ranked number one in Wayne Cavati's final Power 10 rankings, posted today at NCAA.com. Central Missouri will meet the sixth seed, 26 and 17 Henderson State. The Reddies will make their second NCAA appearance thanks to a win against Arkansas Tech and the Great American Championships. A magical win for the Reddies, who were the seventh seed in the conference tournament. The two seed in the Central is 36 and 11. Augustana, South Dakota, the 2018 national champions will make a fifth appearance. The Vikings rank sixth in the country in team earned run average. Their rotation paced by Ryan Jarris and his 1.56 ERA. Opponents are hitting just 192 against Jarris this season. Meanwhile, at the plate, Carter Howell hitting 430. Howell, Jarris, and catcher Will Olson were named first team all conference. They will take on the 5C, 27 and 14 Southern Arkansas sees their name in the tournament for the 13th time. Three Mule Riders earned first team All-Great American Conference, Austin Baker, Brett McGee, and Jacob Womack. 
Womack. Justin Pettigrew is in his fifth season leading the Mule Riders. A talented 16 bracket also includes three seed Minnesota State, champs of the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference Tournament. They earned the league's AQ spot thanks to an 11-9 win against Augustana on Saturday. This is the sixth NSIC title for the Mavericks, 38th NCAA appearance for Minnesota State. Joey Werner hitting 439 with 12 home runs. John Ludwig and Colin Denk are a couple of outstanding arms for Minnesota State. Should be a great game when they take on four seed Arkansas Tech in as an at-large thanks to their 28 and 15 season and the number one seed in that great American conference. Six schools now will compete in the East Regional hosted by Franklin Pierce University. The number one seed is Southern New Hampshire. 24 and 6, your Northeast 10 tournament champion for the third time. They clinched the AQ spot thanks to a sweep of Adelphi. Alex Kennedy drove in five of the nine Penman runs in the clincher. He was named tournament most valuable player. The sixth seed is Dominican, New York. 18 and 13, the Chargers charge into the NCAA tournament on the heels of a 6 5 victory over Thomas Jefferson to win the Central Atlantic Collegiate Conference tournament. This is the 18th CACC championship in program history. The two seed, St. Thomas Aquinas, 25 and five, a lucky seventh NCAA appearance for St. Thomas Aquinas. They take one of the three at large spots in the East after falling to Malloy in the ECC championship. Alex Mack leads the way on the mound for the Spartans. He has a seven and zero record, was named the NCBWA East Region Pitcher of the Year. Their game one opponent, the five seed, is Goldie Beacom, regular season champions of the CACC South Division. They'd have to sweat this show, hoping to see their name called as an at-large after falling to Chestnut Nut Hill in the conference tournament. The Lightning were ranked fifth in the most recent East Region rankings and broke the school record for most wins in a season. That is Goldie Beacom, the five seed in this East Regional. We already mentioned the three seeds name. That would be Malloy. How sweet it is. Malloy, the second seed in the East Coast Conference, swept top seeded St. Thomas Aquinas over the weekend to claim this AQ spot. It's the school's first conference title since the team won the New York Collegiate Athletic Conference crown in 2001 and just their second NCAA appearance. The other came back in 2016. Malloy meets four seed, 22 and nine, Franklin Pierce. Despite conference tournament loss to the region's number one seed, Southern New Hampshire, Franklin Pierce has earned an at-large selection. Jonel Ozuna, 11 home runs and 55 runs batted in. This is the 16th NCAA appearance for the Ravens, who have finished third in the country three different times. You see that team chemistry and camaraderie on the field for 22-9, Franklin Pierce. Another 16 regional will be in the Midwest. Lindenwood University is your host. The number one seed is Illinois Springfield, 37 and six, three straight NCAA appearances now for the Prairie Stars, who were number one in the most recent Midwest rankings. They rank second in the country in batting average, fourth in runs scored, sixth in home runs, a lot of offensive firepower. Zion Pettigrew has 17 of the team's 81 home runs. They will face six seed Northwood, 27 and 15. They were third in the final Midwest rankings. The Timberwolves body of work good enough to grab a selection and see their season continue at least another week. The two seed Trevecca Nazarene, 32 and 10, an outstanding season. They are led by great Midwest Conference Coach of the Year, Chase Sane. The Trojans are in the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history. Braden Odom, Tiger Cox, they were both first team all conference. Congratulations to Trevecca Nazarene with a 32 and 10 record and a two seed here in the Midwest Regional. Trevecca Nazarene faces five seed Quincy, 28 and 13. This is their 10th appearance. Senior ace Riley Martin was tabbed as the GLVC pitcher of the year. The three seed is Davenport, 29 and 14. Also, their first NCAA appearance, 14 straight wins for Davenport. The school's baseball Twitter account has a pinned tweet that says simply, hey guys, we did a thing today. Of course, that thing would be to win the GLIAC Tournament Championship. Also, the regular season champions, Davenport, an outstanding season at 29 and 14. 
the four, the four seed, 33-7, and seven, Lindenwood, Missouri. Champions of the GLIAC against the GLVC winners in a great 3-4 matchup. Lindenwood prevailed in a hard-fought 8-6 game against Illinois Springfield last weekend. They scored five runs in the bottom of the eighth inning to grab the lead in the title game. The AQ and the tournament spot, just the second appearance for the Lions. Justin Taylor was named first team all GLVC as a relief pitcher. So there you have it, four of the eight regional brackets, four more to go. 19 more schools will see their name on the screen after this short timeout on NCAA.com. For the win! If a champion can teach us anything, it's to stay hungry, to keep our resolve, and to prepare for what's next. So to the players in the college sports community who never stop believing, the end goal is in sight. The ultimate rally. A comeback for all ages. For the fans, the teams, and most importantly, the players. Let's bring on the next champion. We're ready. I am Jeremiah Johnson, ready to bring you the four remaining regions as we eagerly anticipate the 2021 Division II Baseball National Championships. Should be a great event. Of course, it gets started this weekend. The South Regional will be hosted by the University of West Florida, the number one seed. They are 34-9, and nine, your Gulf South Tournament champions for the second time in school history. West Florida earns the AQ spot. Evan Floyd was named the most outstanding player of the tournament after he threw 15 scoreless innings in two starts with 19 strikeouts. West Florida in the tournament for the eighth time. The Argonauts won the national championship back in 2011. The sixth seed is shorter, 27 and 15. Our friend Wayne Cavati calls the Hawks one of the biggest surprises in 21 and freshman Jacob Pazier has a 398 average with 19 stolen bases. Two seed in the South is 34-9 Lee. The Flames achieved one goal by winning the Gulf South Conference regular season championship, but a 10-7 loss to West Florida ended hopes of a conference tournament title. Still though, an outstanding season for Mark Bruce's team who is an at-large selection. After that game against West Florida, Bruce said, those are the type of games we would play in a regional. Our guys have proven to be resilient. We are excited to see what the rest of the postseason holds. Alan Smith leads the way, leads the Flames in batting average, while Ryan Beamish has clubbed 20 home runs. Lee will meet five-seed Alabama Huntsville. The Chargers move up to the fourth in the South region rankings. Alabama Huntsville has a 22 and 18 record against Division II opponents. Tampa is in as a three seed. The Spartans, your 2019 national champions, enter the 2021 postseason with a 16 and 14, 16 and four record. The 3.18 team earned run average is good as well. Jordan Lesure was named Sunshine State Conference Pitcher of the Year. In 26 innings pitched, he struck out 42 batters, recorded a .68 earned run average. Joe Urso was named Conference Coach of the Year for an amazing 13th time. Congratulations to Tampa. The fourth seed in the South is Delta State, 26 and 18. Despite a loss to West Florida, Delta State earns a spot. They should be recognized as well for getting into that Gulf South Conference Championship game for the 20th time in school history. Jake Barlow, Hunter Riggins, and Jackson Rutledge earned GSC All Tournament honors for the Statesmen. Three regionals remain. We have one final six-team bracket to show you. That, of course, is the Southeast Regional, hosted by North Greenville University. The number one seed, Catawba, 32-9. The Indians claimed the SAC regular season championship, but did lose to Wingate in the SAC tournament. That was back on April 25th, so it has been a long wait to see if they would make the field for the 13th time in school history. But congratulations to the number one seed in the Southeast Regional. Regional. They'll take on six seed, 29 and 14, Columbus State. They left no doubt in claiming the Peach Belt Conference tournament title last weekend thanks to a 15 to 4 victory over North Georgia. They scored in seven of the nine innings. Devin Dudall was dominant going the distance on the mound. A great time for the first nine inning complete game for Columbus State this season. This is the 27th NCAA regional appearance for Columbus State and the 12th under head coach Greg Appleton. 
The two seed in the Southeast is Mount Olive. 35 and 10, 30th NCAA appearance. 2008 national champs did fall to North Greenville in the Conference Carolinas Championship, but Coach Rob Watt's team is in as an at-large selection. Moving on, the five seed in the Southeast, UNC Pembroke, 29 and 13. This is their fourth NCAA appearance. Congratulations to Paul O'Neill, the Peach Belt Conference Coach of the Year. One final Southeast regional matchup to show you features the three seed Wingate, 30 and 12. They entered the South Atlantic Conference Tournament as the four seed, but by the end of the championships, they were saying we're number one. They defeated third seeded Newberry College to claim the conference's AQ spot. Despite facing elimination three times, Wingate won the title for the seventh time. Hunter Dula had two home runs and five RBI. He was named MVP of the tournament for his work both at the plate and on the mound. Congratulations to Wingate. Should be a very competitive 3-4 game as Wingate plays 33-11 North Greenville. An emphatic 15-1 victory in that Conference Carolinas Tournament Championship puts North Greenville in as an AQ, a participant in the region that they will also host. This is the third consecutive conference tournament title for the Crusaders. The South Central Regional at Angelo State. Four teams will compete for the right to advance to carry North Carolina. Just a reminder, this is also a double elimination regional tournament. The number one seed is Colorado Mesa. Look at that record, 41 and five. The top ranked team in the most recent NCBWA poll, Colorado Mesa, the top hitting team in the country with a 386 batting average. And how about Hayden McGeary who gets hits more than he gets out. He has a 506 batting average, which leads all of division two. Mesa also the only team in the country with more than 500 runs scored. Quoting Wayne Cavati, from start to finish, Colorado Mesa dominated behind arguably the best offense in D2 baseball and terrific pitching. The four seed is 30 and 11, UC Colorado Springs. This will be one of the best matchups of the entire tournament seeing these two teams play because UC Colorado Springs has handed Mesa, three of their five losses. The two wins in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference Tournament were mighty impressive. UC Colorado Springs has already won a program record 30 games. They'll be in the NCAA Tournament for the first time in program history. Individually, Evan Richards was named the MVP of the RMAC Tournament. Keep an eye on the Mountain Lions in this South Central Regional. The two seed in the South Central, 32-7 West Texas A&M, thrilled by the most recent regional rankings that put them second, gave them great reason for optimism heading into this selection show. Well, Exhale Buffaloes, you are in. Led by Matt Vanderberg, the West Texas A&M coaches were named Staff of the Year by the Lone Star Conference. They will take on a three-seed Angelo State, 39-7, claimed the first Lone Star Conference tournament title since 2015. The clincher came Saturday after a 10-3 win against Lubbock Christian. Aaron Walters was named tournament MVP. The title came on the Rams' home field, Foster Field, the same venue which will play host to this South Central Regional. Coach Kevin Brooks told the San Angelo Standard Times, we have full capacity, we can have 4,000, and there's no reason not to go. If you're a baseball fan, you're going to see some really good teams, every one of them. I'm looking forward to that South Central Regional. One final bracket to share this evening, the West Regional, which will be hosted by Northwest Nazarene University. The number one seed with a 33-8 record is Azusa Pacific. For the fifth time in six seasons, Azusa Pacific is in the West Regional. They are primed for a lengthy stay in the tournament after winning their 10th straight game and by claiming Pacific West Conference Automatic Qualifier Pod Series. They are second in the country in home runs. Great balance with Azusa Pacific long ball as seven different players have at least nine dingers. Spencer Rasmussen has 10 homers, an 824 slugging percentage. Meanwhile, Aaron Ruse was named the West Region Player of the Year, while A.J. Woodall is the Pitcher of the Year. The two seed, welcome to the NCAA Tournament, 31-7 Northwest Nazarene. First time participant, the Nighthawks are in as the AQ. 
representing the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. This is the second time the school has won the conference title. Back in 2016, there was not an AQ bid for the league winner. John Gonzalez was named tournament MVP for his stellar work at the plate in the two series wins against Central Washington. Congratulations to West Region Coach of the Year, Joe Schaefer, Northwest Nazarene, the two seed, and a host in the West Regional. And the final team in the field, 20-6 Western Oregon. It's their eighth NCAA appearance. Connor McCord was named the Great Northwest Athletic Conference Player of the Year, while Mike Peterson is the conference's Pitcher of the Year. Congratulations to Western Oregon in the field with a 20-6 and six record, and they will compete once again in this double elimination three-team West Regional. So there you have it, the eight regional brackets for the 2021 NCAA Division II Baseball Championship as you get one final look at that three-team West Regional. Now the eight regional winners will advance to the double elimination finals June 5th through the 12th at the USA Baseball National Training Complex in Cary, North Carolina. Finals will be hosted by the University of Mount Olive and the town of Cary. For more information regarding the NCAA Division II Baseball Championship, of course, log on to www.ncaa.com. Thank you so much for watching and best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's championship. If a champion can teach us anything, it's to stay hungry, to keep our resolve, and to prepare for what's next. So to the players in the college sports community who never stop believing, the end goal is in sight, the ultimate rally, a comeback for all ages, for the fans, the teams, and most importantly, the players. Let's bring on the next champion. We're ready.